Kia ora or hello and welcome back to my channel if you don't know who I am my name is Odessa and today we will be doing a moving slash looking for houses in Wonju, South Korea. Um, if you guys didn't watch my previous video, um, I did a whole video about renewing and transferring in South Korea through Epic um, and in the end I actually decided to renew with my school and um, stay in Wonju for another year. So with that being said, I asked my school hey I love my apartment but I would love to find my own and change from that government school housing which is this the house provided to the allowance which is 400,000 won a month for an apartment today I am going to two real estate agents or two realtors um, here in Wonju with my co-teacher and we are looking at some houses now my co-teacher and I sat down a couple weeks ago and talked about my criteria what I'm looking for I sent her some listings of kind of the potential places and then what happens is she talked to the realtors and they kind of compiled some apartments that fit our budget and key money and all that um, also a little note I am looking for a one bedroom apartment slash villa now in Korea one bedroom actually means this this is a one bedroom because it's literally one room I'm technically looking for a two room or 1.5 room which means uh, kitchen and living are together and then the bedroom is separate so that is my that my main criteria that I'm looking for and also and um, this is just a little extra I would love to have white walls white walls just makes the palette easier to decorate in my opinion and the kind of concept that I'm looking for is um, fresh but with a pop of color so if you guys enjoy this video give it a thumbs up again if you have questions about Korea about moving and all that comment down below I'm happy to help or message me on my social media so with that being said let's get on to the video hello we are back so I just got back from the first realtor um, we were looking at houses for about an hour also I got a package yay I think this is my one us no not one us my Victor album actually so got a delivery it's always exciting it's like Christmas so I looked at three places so a little breakdown I live in mutual dong which and that's where my school is my school is literally like a 10 minute walk from my house um, my school is in like center mutual dong and if you don't know anything about Wonju which you probably guys don't know mutual dong is like the Gangnam of Wonju so it's in like a nice area it's where all the you know doctors and the lawyers and all of that live so all my students are like kids of like doctors and lawyers and stuff so yeah so my realtor for today looked showed me places around mutual dong now with my criteria with my deposit amount and my rent they had to cut it down um to only three houses so i looked at three houses today um and they were also different so let me talk about them so the first one is literally across the road from my school like my school's here the house is here the first one it was a huge apartment huge villa um it's on the top floor so lots of stairs um and it actually has a full ceiling loft like a full upstairs so when you walk in there is the big living room kitchen combined now I really liked how big the space of this place was you can make a living room you can make a dining room area comes with a really nice big TV on the wall um, really roomy and then it has the upstairs loft normally with places like that I expected it to be you know you had to bend down and you know like you can only fit like a bed this place really high ceilings um, massive space lots of windows so beautiful sunlight coming in because it has so much storage so much room perfect for parties you know parties lol parties but like my friends to come over and relax and not be cramped um, I can have a full-on couch and living room space, which I really like. Second one. The second one is my co-teacher's personal favorite, which was my least favorite. Um, it's a two-bedroom, like I said, the bedroom's separate. Um, and I just didn't like the layout. So it's got a really thin kind of hallway that you can't really put anything in. And then you have the bathroom over here and then the kitchen living space. But because the ranch slider... Or like the slider doors to go to the um, laundry is so wide you can't really put anything in the walls so you couldn't really have a specific living room space and then the bedroom is small but like you know you could fit and eat like easily my bed but it had a bright yellow feature wall 
and I'm like, ooh, sis, I like yellow, but not as a feature wall, like, so that's why I was just like, oh, I don't really like this one. And then the third one is my favorite. It's a brand new building. I would say 2018, 2019 maybe. Brick, beautiful. It's on the first floor. Um, this one now is technically uh, 1.5, I'd say one bedroom. So it has the kitchen separate. So there are doors and then you have like your broom, your bedroom, which is, I would say half of this so maybe like if you can see like from that to my wardrobe is kind of the size of the bedroom and then it has like the nice little laundry room and then yeah the kitchen is separate this place is literally brand new you can smell the paint everything new appliances and it comes with the wi-fi it comes with the tv Whereas the first one didn't come with Wi-Fi, so you had to pay for the Wi-Fi, which I pay for the Wi-Fi here. Uh, but it's a little small, it's a lot smaller. I would say it's even smaller than this. So that's why I'm just like, do I want something brand new, clean, you know, fresh? But then I realized it doesn't have any storage. Did not think about that at all. I realized there's like no storage. The first one has so much storage. Food for thought. But yeah, so those are currently the three that I looked at. In the morning, I have another session with a different realtor. So that is currently the situation. Um, I definitely have cut number two out. Number one and number three are still hot options. Um, yeah, so that is it. Okay, let's go to the next ones. So during this time, I looked at three other houses. This one was a bit of a weird layout. It had a separate bedroom, but it didn't really have a living room. I then also checked out this family sized one, which had like three bedrooms, which I didn't need. And if I was downsizing to sell, then obviously too much furniture. And then this one was one I actually really wanted, but turns out someone else put their deposit in like five minutes before me. So yeah, sucks for me, but I wasn't able to get it. Yes, I am in a new place. Um, I moved. I'm sitting on the floor because the lighting is fantastic from where I'm sitting and where my new desk is, the lighting is shit. So here I am sitting on the floor. It's quite cozy. As you can see, I don't have a lot of furniture in my new house, uh, but that is what is coming very soon. But yes, I am in a new place and I actually moved at the end of February. So I've been here for about a month now and I thought might as well do a breakdown of my whole process of moving and with the EPIC program. When you're with the Pro EPIC program, there are two housing options. There is the first and the most common and most popular, which is you use or you take the housing that is provided by the school and the government. Um, so that means the, ha the school finds your place, um, everything's pretty much furnished, well, it should be furnished, uh, and yeah, they cover the key money, the deposit, they cover the rent and all that good stuff. The only thing that you have to cover are your utility bills. The second option is the option where you find your own place, um, and so if that is the case, the rent is still covered by the EPIC program, which is around 400,000 won per month. Now that can vary. Sometimes it could be a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on what province you are and what your allowance is. Um, but the one thing with choosing that option is you do have to cover the cost of the key money or the deposit and maintenance fees if your place requires maintenance fees. What is key money, you ask? So key money is pretty much a deposit. In New Zealand, we call it a bond, um, which is normally like a month's rent plus letting fee plus blah, blah, blah. And you usually, or well, 99% of the time, you get it back. Unless you turn your house into a shithole, then you don't. But it's the same in Korea. The key money or the key deposit is a large sum of sum of money that you have to give the house owner, which you get back. Now this varies from a, maybe a minimum of five hundred thousand won to one million won, which is around five hundred to one thousand dollars, or it can go upwards to ten, fifteen, twenty to fifty million won, which is around. 10,000, 15, 20, 50,000. 
depending on what you get. Now the 10,000 upwards is more around sole. Um, you're looking at that minimum if you want a nice place. Um, in Wonju, when I was looking at places, the most I saw was 5 million won, which is around $5,000. Um, most of the places I was looking at were around the 2 million won mark, which was around $2,000. Like I said, 99% of the time you have to provide key money, you have to pay it yourself. Your school is not required to pay for it. But sometimes your school might be a darling and uh, pay for it or give you some money towards it. Now, my school actually offered to give me 500,000 won to cover my key money, though the problem with that is they didn't want me to add in. So if I found a place that was, you know, 1 million uh, won or 2 million, they said that I couldn't add on. They only wanted me to find a place that was 500,000 won. Now that is a very hard thing to do, um, but if your school is willing to talk to the real estate agents and finesse them to drop the key money, real estate agents um, might be really nice and drop it for you. That's what happened in my case. Um, the places I was looking at, like I said, were around the $2,000 mark, but a lot of them were willing to drop to 500,000 won, which is $500. I was really lucky in that instance, though, however, that being said, yes, my school was going to provide key money, but during the time that I found my house and was going to give my key money, my school actually couldn't provide me that money at that certain time. During the time I was looking for houses, I found a place really quickly and um, they weren't prepared, so they weren't able to give me that $500. So in the end, even though my school offered, I actually ended up paying for the key money myself. Um, which was okay, I was okay about because I mentally prepared to pay for key money anyway. It was just a nice suggestion that my school offered to pay for it. Ah, another thing with rent. Um, you have, like I said, a 400,000 won per month stipend, though sometimes your school might allow you to find a place that is more, which means that they will allow you to add 100, 200, 300 dollars to the apartment if you want something a little bit more bougie. Um, my school in this instance did not allow me to. They didn't like the idea of having different money coming in and out and like them paying a certain amount and then I'm having to pay for a certain amount and me transferring the money. They thought it could get messy so they're like you need to find a place that is 400,000 won a month or cheaper which I was, I was okay about but my friend who moved into an office towel. Hers was $150 more and her school allowed her to pay that extra. They just took it out of her pay per month, which was sweet. Um, so just talk to your school about that if they will allow you to do that. Also talking about allowing your school to do that. Um, your school also might decline you choosing your housing, um, the city. second option, because your school might have a contract with that apartment or with that real estate, meaning that that contract could be for five years and um, they can't break that contract. So your school might also decline you choosing that option of choosing your own house. My school at first told me they had to check with the contracts to make sure that my house was only a year. If it was going to be two years or more, they said that I couldn't find housing. But in the end, they were like, no, it's okay. Your housing contract ends at the end of February, so you can choose your own housing from then. But it's really important to communicate with your school with everything you're doing, because obviously they're the ones signing the contract and all that stuff. So keep them in the loop. Also, within fees, um, if you do choose an apartment, you are looking at maintenance fees. Now, maintenance fees are on top of utility bills. Maintenance fees are like the elevator fees, uh, the fire, the safety, the recycling. Um, that's all covered under the maintenance fees, which could start from $50 to $100, depending on how new, fancy your apartment building is. Um, with a villa, you don't need to pay for maintenance bills. You just have to pay for utility, which is power and water, or gas and water and whatever, which for me, my place is so cheap, uh, so I don't really mind. Ah, when it comes to epic housing, now there is a list of things that your house needs to have. It is essential, it's in your contract, it's illegal if they don't 
have it. So if you don't have it, there is a budget that the school has for you. Now this budget, I don't know how much it is, but it is to cover the necessities for your house. So that is microwave seating or a dining table that you need to have your house. Um, you need a TV, a bed, a wardrobe, a washing machine, and a fridge. Now if those do not come with your apartment, the school needs to provide them to you. It's in the contract. So if you're missing some seating or if you do move into a new place um, and you want some new furniture, they will provide it. As long as it's in the list of requirements, they can cover that for you. So in my old place, they covered everything but a microwave. So they allowed me to pick myself a microwave and I have it and I brought it with me. Again, if you are moving from a place provided to a place that you're moving to, you have to bring the furniture that they do provide. So you can't be like, oh, I'm moving to a new house, now you have to buy me new furniture. No, if your housing that you lived in previously already, already has the wardrobe, the bed and stuff, you have to bring that with you. If not, and you decide to not, you have to pay for that yourself. Um, and sometimes your school might not allow you to chuck stuff out. Um, my school brought me brand new furniture, so like my wardrobe, my bed, all was brand new. I even have a receipt of how much they spent on the furniture, which is ridiculous. So expensive. Um, but when I was moving here, since I have a loft and upstairs, my big ass bed frame was not going to fit upstairs. So I asked them, is it okay if I can just use the mattress? And my school was really chill about it. They're like, yeah, we'll just pick up your bed frame and we can put it into storage so you can just keep the mattress. So again, talk with your school. Communication is key. There are three apps that you can use to look for houses. Um, these three are the three that I used, which was Dabang, Jipbang, and Neighborland. Those are the three most popular. Out of all of them, I recommend Jipbang. They are the less dodgy ones. I know Dabang has lots of ghost listings or fake listings. Like I said, a lot of the places are under real estate agents. Um, but you will find some listings that come across with independent landlords, house owners. So they are a little bit easier to work with because it's just you and them. You can work out a better deal. Whereas when there's a real estate agent, there's a middleman, which means that you're they're paying money for the real estate agent. I think, my opinion, I think the second option for housing with Epic, finding your own place, is a better option to do if you're already living in Korea. If you've lived here for a year or two and you want to make the transition from housing provided to finding your own place, I think that's the best option if you're here because the whole process is a little bit crazy. It's really hard and fast. Houses come and go. You're always needing to be talking to, you know, your co-teachers or the real estate agents. Uh, and if you're living in a different country, it's a little bit hard. And like I said, uh, houses come and go so quickly, like so, so quickly. If you find a house you like, you can't ponder. You can't be like, oh, hang on, let me look for more houses first. I did that and I screwed my options. So, uh, yes. Uh, the best option I feel like is to look for a housing when you're already here. Um, but that's just me. You might not want to be surprised with what you're living in when you literally move thousands of miles to a whole different country and you want to be comfortable with knowing what you have, I understand. So just do a little bit more research and give yourself time to comprehend that obviously everything's going to be in Korean and if you don't have anyone to support you, it's going to be hard finding your house because the real estate agents see foreigners and they're like, oh, we can finesse you. Um, that means like creating like you know, making deals like, oh, can you give me key money for this amount of money instead of this might not happen because you don't have anyone to finesse, you know, you need some finessing. Anyway, that is my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will be uploading a whole moving vlog literally after this video. So keep tuned if you want to see moving from my previous house to this house. Um, you'll also get a sneak peek of what I'm living, where my house is <laughs> and what my house looks like. But, and then I will give you an apartment tour maybe down the track sometime. Okay, cool. Anyway, I will see you guys soon. Kakutianor, ciao, goodbye.